Okay, let's do a walkthrough of while loop worksheet number two, at least some of, the, some of the exercises. Make sure you read these directions. You have not been taught everything yet in this course that uh, is the Java syntax that you need to know to successfully complete these exercises. Read the directions. Okay, num is uh, initialized to five. Num is indeed less than 10, so that's true, and we system out print num. So that's pretty easy, a five prints out. Then we uh, hit the line of code plus equals two, so it bumps up to seven. It loops back up to the top, because that's what loop, while loops do, and it is still less than 10, so we print num again. Well, num is now seven. And because of the ln, it prints it on the next line, right below the five. It adds two. Nine is indeed less than 10, so we print the nine, and we add two, and, but 11 is not less than 10. At that moment, the control expression is false. We don't execute the loop anymore, and we are finished with the code segment. Circle your final values, since that, it tells you to do that in the directions up here, circling the last value. And uh, just know that the output is 579. Exercise number two. I'm going to start it, but I'm going to uh, let you finish it for homework. Uh, they, each variable initializes at 5. The control expression, where the, the double ampersand means and, um, the, the control expression is overall true. So we do indeed system out print num with a hyphen. So 5 hyphen. And then num minus minuses, which means it bumps down to 4. Dum plus pluses, which means it goes up to 6. We loop back up to the top. We inspect the control expression. It is indeed still true, because when you have a true and with a true, overall it's true. So we system out print, not print ln, print. Num plus hyphen. And that plus means concatenation, just like it did in Visual Basic. So num, which is four, prints out right next to that hyphen over there, and another hyphen prints out. OK, whatever. It's just the way it, that's just the way it happens. And num minus minuses, and dum plus pluses, and uh, so on. I'm not going to finish the rest of this problem, but what I should do is I'm going to circle these as my final answers. And anybody who uh, looks at the end of this video to try to copy the answers without listening to the oral audio track here, they're going to get one wrong. Because this loop still goes around. Uh, period 1 Java is laughing right now because they know the Period 4 students uh, probably won't have the patience to watch and listen to this video. So they'll have one wrong. OK, moving on. And that person in Kansas that's probably watching the go fast forwards to the end of this video will get it wrong because they don't listen to everything I say in the video. OK, number three. I will um, emphasize that for number three, this is the word or. In Java, uh, that means or, like it did in DB. This means not. And the not of a greater than one, if you want to think of it as, you can think of it as the not, well, you know what, we'll just start this problem and I'll talk it out loud. Both variables uh, initialize at five, and we analyze the control expression working from inside the parentheses out. This is tricky, so pay attention to this wording. We start over here on the left, let's say, num greater than one. Well, num is five. So is 5 greater than 1? True. But when you not the true, that the not of a true is a false. So all this over here simplifies to a, an f. And that's being ORed with whatever this is. Is dumb greater than or equal to 8? Uh, no, it's not. 5 not greater than or equal to 8. So that inside there is a false. But when you not it with that exclamation mark, the not of a false is a true just like it did in Visual Basic last year. So overall, when you have a while loop that says false or true, according to the truth table that you still have memorized from last year, or you just know that when you don't eat your asparagus, but you do eat your broccoli, and the easy parent allows you to have dessert if you just eat one or the other, you do get dessert. Overall, it is true. So overall, this whole control expression is a big fat T, and we do, therefore, go through the while loop this first iteration. Wow, that was a mouthful. All that just to analyze one iteration through the while loop. We system out print num plus dumb, but that's got a set of parentheses there. And even if it didn't have a set of parentheses, this plus here is mathematical addition. And dumb plus num is 10. 
And then we are we have a situation where we have a 10 plus hyphen, because that's what this would simplify to, this system out print statement. Well, Visual Basic, not Visual Basic, Java will concatenate, and the digits 1, 0 with a hyphen displays. Because of uh, the way that all of this evaluates inside the system out print. Now we uh, execute the line of code num equals num minus 1. Well, we always work from the right hand side, and num is currently 5. A 5 minus a 1 is a 4. That 4 gets assigned into the variable num, crossing that 5 out, making it a 4 to be careful here. I don't do this stuff in my head. I always, I always make columns like this on AP exam multiple choice questions especially. Then we execute the line of code dumb plus equals one. Now what dummy chose to write this assignment statement out the long-handed way but then used the shortcut op compound operator plus equals on this line of code? That's ah, inconsistent. You know, he could have rewrote this as dumb equals dumb plus one because that's what it means. And this line up here could have been re rewritten as num minus equals 1. So I'm just saying, it's kind of poor code, poor style. Well, anyway, what happens here with dumb equals dumb minus 1? Dumb is currently 5. The 5 plugs in for dumb on the right-hand side. 5 minus 1 is 4, and that 4 gets assigned into the variable dumb. So dumb is now down to 4. Gee whiz, all of that work just for one darn loop iteration, and now I have to go back up to the top and do it all again, and again, and again, and again, possibly, and again, and again, and again. I'm really going to throw people off. I'm going to circle these as my final answers and let people think that uh, this is the final answer here if they fast forward to the end of this video. Okay, I don't have much time left in this particular class period, so I'm going to rush it a little bit. Uh, num is zero. And number four, that is true, so it system out prints zero. It goes back up to the top of the loop. Num is zero, okay, it prints a zero right next to that because of the print, and it never ends. That's an infinite loop. There's no plus plus, you see. So num has no chance of ever hitting one. And it, don't cross this out. Don't do this. That's wrong, because num was only set equal to zero one time. So... You know, I'm, I'm going to circle this as the final answer and show this whole trace. That's also wrong for anybody listening to this video. That's the wrong way to have done it. You should just have one simple zero like I had before. Okay, number five, starting you out real quickly, uh, one and zero here. Uh, ooh, sum minus num. That would be negative one. Is zero less than negative one? No, so we never even execute this at all. Oh, man. All that fun we could have had, but it never happened. The merry-go-round was broken at Hershey Park, and you just never got to ride on it this, on this trip. So, but we still system out print because it's outside of the while loop. So it system out prints this zero with a comma and a space, because I, I do have a space embedded there, and then num. So that will be the correct answer, circling these. And now I do a slow pan for people to copy my answers at the end of this video. Ha! You sucker. Okay, that's the wrap.